Hello, and welcome to another Cuz Bad Guys Tactical Breakdown. In this breakdown, we are going to cover Killer Croc. And in this case, I think this is a version from the video games. I think it's Arkham Origins or Arkham City. Uh, essentially, this is Killer Croc from a video game. He has just busted out from uh, the Arkham Asylum, has his restraints still on him. In their paint job, he has the inmate pants on, so orange. Uh, my rendition and the way I like this character is actually from the comic books. So uh, less Arkham Asylum, more uh, sewers, streets. Uh, he's wearing blue jeans. That's the way I really see this character. He's a great Batman villain, and he and Bane have some issues in a lot of the comic books, going back for quite a ways. So let's go ahead and dive right on into his character card. So this is Waylon Jones, a.k.a. Killer Croc. He is a free agent with affiliate unknown, so can be taken with a ton of different crews. He does have some hatreds, so he hates Batman, Green Arrow, Law Forces, and Bane. So obviously this is Killer Croc. He is going to be eating people. So any of the good guy crews are not going to like him and are going to want to put him behind bars on site. So totally makes sense that he has hates Batman, Green Arrow, and Law Forces. And like I was saying a bit earlier, he has hates Bane. So... Killer Croc and Bane have quite the history. They have not liked each other since the 90s, as far as I know. They've uh, gotten into quite a few scuffles and uh, four fights that I know of. And it's actually three to one with Bane coming out on top. The most recent fight between Killer Croc and Bane, Killer Croc actually won. So uh, kudos to him, and that's pretty awesome. He's a great uh great bad guy so no weapons to speak of uh because he's essentially a living weapon he has all kinds of teeth and claws and stuff he doesn't really need some kind of bat or a gun or anything he likes to get down and dirty and get it done by himself so let's go right on into his stats so his willpower is seven which is pretty high for a free agent pretty awesome he has the counters that you want to have to be able to use to attack to move to defend himself uh willpower seven pretty solid on him so strength three plus which is on par with batman uh really really good strength three plus means that when he hits somebody they are gonna be taking damage uh Three plus, really good on this guy. He is then movement two, attack five, defense three, and endurance nine. So movement two is a little lackluster. He is large, so he has the bonus to movement, but uh, movement two is still a little low. He also has sewers to help him move around, which is good, but movement two, as soon as he comes out of the sewers, he is going to be stuck where he is. So. Uh, keep a plan in mind with this guy because he is not going to be getting anywhere fast and then attack five attack five is on par with the higher end batmans it's on par with bane uh, attack five is really good he's only going to be blocked on fives and sixes when people try to stop him from clawing them uh, and then because he has claws that is a uh, possible damage of 10 so five blood five stun really awesome we'll get more on into that when i get to his personal traits so his defense is three defense a little lackluster kind of like any of the other bruisers in the game like uh the beat sticks they kind of have a lower defense because they don't really worry about blocking they're all about jumping on people and just beating them down uh, defense three, kind of a little lackluster, but it it serves his purpose. At least it's not defense two. So, and then his endurance is nine. Endurance nine is killer. This guy usually tanks. They're like endurance eight. This guy is endurance nine. He has that extra uh, extra endurance to be able to last longer. 
Endurance 9 is amazing. He It takes a lot of punishment for this guy to go down. So let's go on into his personal traits. His first personal trait is going to be amphibious. So amphibious totally makes sense being on this guy because he is the crocodile man. So amphibious is going to be this character does not spend movement counters to move through difficult ground elements that are mainly composed of water such as rivers, swamps, sewers, etc. So you would think that that uh, doesn't isn't going to really play into the game because there aren't really a lot of rivers on tabletops. I have seen some like pools and stuff like that. My buddy is actually putting together a pier uh, table, so boats and stuff like that. It'll be super sweet. But uh, the way that this guy that special rule actually matters on the tabletop is sewers because sewers cost a move and a special to go into and come out of and amphibious means that killer croc only has to spend a special to be able to go into or out of a sewer because a sewer counts as being a water feature uh super awesome means that he's gonna still have six willpower left six tokens left to be able to use after he comes out of a sewer and creep up on and attack somebody. It's really, really good. It doesn't sound like it would be a lot, but that gives him a movement counter to be able to move and then five attack to be able to pounce on somebody. His next personal trait is going to be large. So large is uh, one of the great rules that like Bane has, uh, Solomon Grundy, really really good rule to have it's uh it's gonna boost their base movement from being 10 to 12 uh so when they when they run it's gonna be 24 centimeters instead of 20. uh they also gain the charge special rule so charge is a move in a special you move your base movement which is 12 and they get a free attack and push action against everyone that they hit in that line so I use this to push people off of objectives. Uh, normal people, like normally in games, people aren't expecting you to do that uh, because they know that they have the charge rule, but uh, they don't realize how you can use that to uh, change the game with pushing people off of objectives. With charge, you also get uh, that free attack. So that means, so Killer Croc is attack five, but if you spend a move and a special to use charge and you hit somebody and then you can have five counters left over in attack because he's willpower seven. So you can charge somebody, hit them once, push them off of an objective and then attack them five times. So you actually get six attacks against a single character and that's going to be really devastating against almost anybody. Really, it's uh, charge is really good. Uh, another thing is going to be he can't be knocked down by characters unless they have the large special rule. So uh, some random guy with a handgun that shoots him and gets a double doesn't knock him down. It has to be a large uh, character to knock Killer Croc down, which is really good. The only bad thing about being large is that your pings are at a minus one because you're so big you can't hide normally like other people can behind cars and stuff like that. So pings being a little lower isn't uh, very optimal, but it's a, it's a handicap that you have to have for having all the other cool rules that large gives you. His next personal trait is going to be superior smell. So this, just like with Catman, it sounds really, really dumb, but the bonuses that it gives you is amazing. Because, so it makes it so your line of sight isn't limited by uh, the normal 30 centimeters. So essentially you have night vision. He doesn't have any ranged attack to speak of, so that's not gonna matter. The other thing, uh, is what's gonna matter for his superior smell. So the smoke special rule, he ignores the smoke, uh, which smoke is devastating to uh, just regular people. But guys like Killer Croc and Catman, they can just walk through the smoke 
still spend movement counters, still attack normally, still defend normally. They can destroy people. If you combine guys that have superior sm smell with uh, henchmen or characters that have smoke grenades, they can really devastate people. It's really, really good. I love doing it. Uh, his next personal trait is going to be tough skin. Tough skin is whenever anybody hits and then rolls to damage against him, their damage is at a minus one. So that doesn't sound like a lot right off the bat, but for henchmen, that is devastating because most henchmen, they are strength five. So they're normally only damaging people on fives and sixes. As soon as you throw Killer Croc in the mix and they're only damaging on six, like even uh, like uh, League of Shadows uh, ninjas, the ninjas that have the katanas that have handy and sharp, they're only strength five. So when they're damaging Killer Croc, they're only damaging on sixes. So even with that sharp special rule, they're still going to almost more than not do absolutely nothing to kill a croc. It's tough skin makes this guy a henchman killer. He destroys henchmen. His next special rule is going to be cannibal. So cannibal, a lot of people like to compare it to arrest, but it's not as good because it requires a roll. So Cannibal says that if you're ever in base with a character that is knocked out, you have to take a willpower check. And if you fail the willpower roll, you have to spend any two counters that are on your card. And the character that you're in base with gets removed as a casualty because Killer Croc eats them. Uh, but the trick is, is that you have to fail the willpower check. So it's a nice little fluffy rule that Killer Croc has because he does eat people. He is a cannibal. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's not something that you want to uh, bank on happening just because he is willpower seven and that's a little high. So more than not, you're going to be passing that willpower check. His next personal trait is going to go into his close combat abilities, which is Claws. So Claws are going to give you a bonus in damaging. Uh, so instead of doing the standard stun, Claws makes it so you do a blood and a stun per hit. So just like I was saying with his attack 5, he has a possible 10 damage, which is 5 blood, 5 stun, which will knock out essentially almost anyone in the entire game as long as you hit and damage with everything and then just like i was saying with large you actually get an extra hit uh so if you charge somebody with a move and a special and then attack them five times you actually get six attacks so that's six blood six stun 12 possible damage it's monstrous his next special trait is going to be Lord of the Sewer, which that is totally what Killer Croc is. He rules the underground in Gotham, like the literal underground, not like the underworld or anything like that, like black market stuff, but he rules the sewers. Uh, so this special rule is Killer Croc does not count towards the limit of models that can be in the sewers at any one time. This character may start the game in the sewers, but if he does so, must remain there for at least one turn. In addition, this character's crew generates one extra sewer marker. So normally... You can only have one character in the sewer, so you can have another character and Killer Croc in the sewer. Uh, and he can start the game in the sewer, so he can start the game uh, being able to teleport anywhere onto the board as long as there's a sewer marker there on turn two, because he has to spend the first turn out. Uh, makes this guy very mobile at the beginning of the game. Uh, it can also freak your opponent out because he doesn't know where Killer Croc's going to come out of. Really, really good. And then he also makes it so you generate an extra sewer marker. So you get D3 plus 1. A lot of times when I use this character, I'll use maps and I'll choose an extra sewer. So I'll get D3 plus 2. 
You can also make it so you get even more sewers by using a organized crime crew and taking Loeb as your uh, sidekick boss or as a sidekick. And he has uh, public resources and public resources gives you an extra lamp and sewer. So if you use organized crime, play Loeb, play Killer Croc, and you use maps, you can have three plus D3 sewers. So tons of places for Killer Croc to pop up out of uh, makes it really makes him very effective. So he can be essentially anywhere. Let's go ahead and cover his reputation. So his reputation is 95 points. So 95 points is a little steep. Usually bruisers like this are about 90 points. He's on par with like Bane. Uh, Bane Origins, and then a few of the Batmans. The Batmans have better defense, uh, but they're usually a little bit more expensive than he is. Uh, so 95, pretty good for what he does. His weakest point is going to be his mobility and his lower defense, which is what bruisers usually suffer with. Uh, and then no funding. So no funding it's because this guy has no range combat to speak of. He has doesn't have a gun, anything like that. So it uh, makes it so you can run him in crews that are gun heavy and you don't have to worry about putting that funding towards a free agent that you take. Uh, so strengths. Strengths are going to be his large special rule, being able to charge people, and his claws. Him being able to... Uh, coup de gras people when they're knocked out and uh, maybe get the cannibal roll off uh, totally works really well he really really mows through henchmen henchmen have a hard time dealing with him just because of his tough skin he can go toe to toe with other beat sticks like batman or bane or uh, some of those guys just because he has endurance nine uh, but They'll usually go back and forth, and Killer Croc will end up going down. So if you send Killer Croc after somebody like Bane or Batman or something like that, make sure that you have a little bit of support, like two henchmen to go help him just to get uh, n numerical superiority, uh, lower that person's defense, get a ton of hits in, and then also distract them from attacking Killer Croc and have them worry about... Uh, some of the little henchmen because they, those beat sticks can take out the little henchmen pretty easy and then they'll leave Killer Croc to be able to attack. So let's go ahead and get right on into how I painted this character. So I painted him outside of the video game because I really like the look of him in jeans so I tried to paint his pants to look that way. Uh, he still has all the chains and shackles and stuff on him, which I think they look pretty cool, but uh, I really want a comic book version to Killer Croc. I really liked how his skin came out. I like the uh, yellow under the green, and then the black under the green. Uh, I think it looks really, really good. I'm really happy with how he turned out. I'm not the best painter, but I, I think this uh, turned out decent. So how do you guys use Killer Croc? What crews do you put him in? Do you like using him in Suicide Squad or other crews? And remember, cause bad guys.